Welcome to season number three of this Youth Academy rebuild at Somerset. The only players we're allowed to sign in this save is through our Youth Academy or through the Youth section of the contract renewals. It's possibly the hardest thing we have done on Cricket Captain. We are coming off a stellar year where after relegation we are going back to Division 1 after absolutely bossing the county championship. The Royal London Cup, just as it did in the 10 season Sussex save, appears to be very hard. But we won the blast thanks to possibly the greatest bowling performance of all time uh, by our team. And we won 13 games and then we worked our way through the knockout stages. So today we're going to get stuck in Season 3. But before we do, we can see that we have now won two of the four titles available to win in the game. And also, before we move on, we can see that Kale, 36 wickets, was the most in the blast. Contract time. Dave is retired. That's good. That's more money for us. And look how many players are up for grabs. So, as I've said before, we can only sign players that's come through either the Devon or the Somerset Youth Academy. So, Tom Abel is available, so we'll have him for a couple more years. Dixon is not available for us to sign, but Tom Lamanby is. Will Smead is. Tom Banton is. Jimmy Rue, I really want to take a step forward. He's only 20, but he's had a poor start so far. Casey Aldridge is our guy. Three-year deal. Available 100%. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, Lewis Gregory has been exceptional. We'll give him two years because he's 32 years old. George Thomas, the former England under-19 player, will get three years. Thomas will get a couple of years as well. Bashir, we can't sign, which is a, a big loss. And Leonard, who we signed actually in the Sussex save, is going to get a contract as well. Young players coming through... Uh, are all going to get three-year deals. Cook, keeper, came through. He got some runs for us. And uh, Edmonds played for us as well. Look, he's averaging 60. You just wonder whether there's something really special there. It does give us 160 grand as well. 155,000. And we've also got a squad size of 29. With the bat, in terms of the players that will be available for the Royal London Cup, we've got... Umid, we can't play, so we've got Golly, Plummer, Flavin, Swanton, Edmonds, Rue, Cook. So we've got seven, Aldridge, Goldsworthy. So we've actually got enough players to put out a team, which is always the most important thing. Um, but one of the huge things about this game is, last episode, we managed to get two of the greatest bowlers going, which is great. But now we need to look at it again and see if we can start to continuously build on this team. And the first player that takes our eyes is this guy, which is Anthony Addy, who is 22 years old. But the thing about Anthony Addy, if we look, he's 70,000, which normally means he stands out head and shoulders above everyone else at being amazing. 143 wickets, 17 in three-day cricket, 61 at 18 in one-day cricket, uh, and that is an exceptional record. So... I think this is, this is time and time again, these are the sorts of players that you want to have your money to be able to go and sign, uh, and we're doing that. So 70,000 for him. There is a guy here, Morris, who's 19,000, averaging 52 in three-day cricket. Also a strike rate of 70. That's quite phenomenal. But Rafferty's got an average of 52 in one-day cricket, a strike rate of 117, and a 169 strike rate He's an opener, which is always handy, and he's 17. I think we're going to have a little look at Andy Rafferty. And there's one other guy here. I'm surprised I'm going so much all in. And it's 25 grand for Jay Wall at the bottom here. Now, what's really interesting about him is he's got 80 wickets at 21, which is cool. Strike rate of 42 is just above Addy, and I'm okay with that. His one-day record is equally as good, if not better, thanks to his strike rate. Remember, I feel like strike rate is king. Uh, particularly when it came to the blast. And his blast strike rate in second team cricket is 9.6. We're going to have another look. In which case, Ade signs, Rafferty signs, and the wall signs. I do feel like that's probably enough to keep us going for a while. There's no one now that's got like a huge price. Oh, Brindle's got a really high price bracket. So let's just, uh, let's just explore that. Average is 49 in three-day cricket, but there's a lot of guys like that. Average is 66 in one-day cricket. That's quite exceptional. And in the blast, 124 strike rate isn't all that, but average is 45. He wants 28,000 a year. We can offer that. And he, and he signs. And Ben Green is off playing in the Indian 20 League as well. This is really interesting. Brindle's already maxed out his front foot and offside batting. So we're going to put him on some pace bowling. Allen... 
has already picked up an England contract after appearing in six test matches, seven one days and five T20s during the winter. He's had one season with us. That is quite phenomenal. Keel and Mitchell are both also on. The interesting thing here is Ade and Wall, who we've just signed, Ade being the spinner, is telling us we're better than Keel and could get in the starting lineup. Kale's a machine. I think he's already maxed out his aggressive bowling because he's the strike rate king. No, he's not maxed it out, but I just put him on defensive and he's just improved that immediately. But we are back in Division 1 and this is going to be a really interesting time. Are we good enough to make a stand and play with the big wigs of Division 1? Last two years, George Bartlett has been the man with the bat. It wants us to play Edmonds, but I'm going to give Bartlett a little bit more time. All the players that aren't playing are going to go and play second team cricket. But it does cause us concern going, how do we fit everyone into this team? I want to give Brindle a go. T. Brindle. He averaged 56 last year for someone. So that's cool. But he's a youth player that's come through. Tom Abel is good enough for this level. So it's, it's hard to know how to fit everyone in. We need to play Jimmy Roo, but we also need five bowlers. Also, before I've fiddled around with the team, we're a five-star rated team. George Bartlett's going to be the one to miss out. James Rue bats at six. Is that going to be a downfall for us? We're still a five-star rated team going up against a five-star rated Sussex, who have not quite built the team just as I had, but look uh, impervious and a very, very good team on the game. We're going with debuts for Brindle in this, as well as Addy and Wall. Both debuts for our club. We've won the toss. We're going to bat. Oh, what a doozy first game of the season. This Somerset team, sorry, Sussex team, was very good with the ball previously. And they were good here. Robinson, Archer, Garton, Hudson, Prentice, all very, very reasonable. Tom Abel top scores with 78. Not much else from the team. Uh, Brindle makes 48 on debut. Second innings, Alan Hu. To be honest, in county cricket, I know he's gone on to have these accolades in international cricket. I've not really seen heaps of, but batted really well for 88. Two very evenly matched teams. Not a great deal between them, and they needed 13 runs more to win the game. They couldn't do it, and I think the performance has got to be Wall, because he removed Steve Smith, Tom Allsop. He got big wickets uh, and two threefers on debut. Look very, very good. Plumbers improved their fast bowling technique to the limit. Just need to see this turn into some runs, to be honest. We've smashed Essex by an innings and four runs. This is how good our bowling attack is. We only scored 291. Tom Abel with another 50. I feel, you know, I tried to move on from him last year, and that's okay because we had a good enough team to get promoted, but he's going to be key batting at three. Uh, him and Alan put on a really good partnership of 94. Jimmy Roo with 50 not out as well. We need a big performance from Jimmy Roo. He's not... Had a great start to the series. But like I said, he's only 20. And then we roll through them. Kale with 5 for 30. Uh, economy rate 2.40 there was actually reasonable because he went at 4.31 and it was a lot higher. Um, but we bowled them out twice and we're top after two. Jimmy Roos improved his offside batting to the limit. What I am going to do is change him to be slightly more aggressive. Match drawn in the third game. We set them about 260 to win. They didn't have a long time to do it. They had 60 overs. We got them eight down, not a bad performance, but Mitchell and Kale kind of went missing a little bit in this game. Uh, Finn, uh, Finn Allen, Frank Allen, uh, with a really good knock of 237. Highest one for him so far, uh, but he is a very good player. He's already got a test match 101 to his name. Plumber as well. This was much needed. The Plum Dog goes and gets his fourth first class century. Another game, another win, another innings win. James Rue, 119 off 276. The strike rate's low, but the consistency is starting to come through. A century and a 50 to his name now. Really important. Ellen batted well again. Brindle was three runs off a first first class century for us, first county championship century for us. Really close, but the damage was done in the first innings. Mitchell and Kale, very, very good. Wall's wicket here of folks was a really big one. Um, and same in the second innings. It was just good performance. Wall got two big wickets. Sibley and Jack's very quick succession. We've changed things around. We're playing on bowling wickets. We've got a bowling team. And we're getting points for it. As Wall has improved his attacking bowling. 
done it again. Another innings victory. This time we got a few more runs. 549 for seven declared. Uh, declared just to get a few overs in before the close of day number two. Brindle goes and scores his first century. 185 off 226. It was a brutal knock. Batted steadily before accelerated nicely through to go off his 97 previously. And good consistency from the top order. 50 for Plummer, Abel, Rue, Gregory, all chipping in. And then when it came to the ball, it was actually Lewis Gregory's spell here. I think he got Cliff, King and Billings in the middle order just before the second new ball was due and we, we rinsed through them pretty fast. Allen's improved his offside batting to the limit and Allen, Mitchell and Kale are all on England one day international duty. Does mean we're going to have a lot of changes to this beautifully balanced lineup. And the changes we're going to make is George Bartlett's going to come back into the lineup. He's been good the last two seasons. Craig Overton's back in, and Wayne Wright, who we signed in the first signed in the first year, is into the lineup. Just a four and a half star rated team now, so not quite as good. But hopefully, we've won the toss. We're going to bat in beautiful conditions on a bowling wicket because we're at home, and we batter Durham. A good Durham team with a very good bowling attack as well. Uh, Broding, Cost, Maddie Potts, Basley, the Liam Norwell. Excellent. Ben Stokes playing in it. Uh, but we somehow mustered together 272, mainly off a ball at 50 and Gregory 45. Ball those out for 207. Wall opening the bowling for the first time with 4 for 52, looking very good. And then we find one partnership in the whole game. And it's 299 between Abel and Rue. Didn't realise Tom Lamanby was retired hurt, but he is in dreadful form. <laughs> What's he averaging this year? 19. He's uh, not playing very well, but Tom Abel with a century. James Rue continuing this fine dream start to the season. He gets 130 not out, uh, and then 190 all out. Partnership, Borthwick and Stokes were looking good, but... It's about the 40th over. We just kick into another gear. We're 10 points clear at the top after six going into the break. Time to change. We're changing Ade uh, and Wall over, Wainwright over. All these guys are going to be working on aggression. Not sure if we're going to quite be as good as last year, but you never know. We still might be reasonably useful. I think Rafferty's worth a look at. He's got a 169 strike rate in second team cricket. So that's pretty useful. With the ball, Kale and Mitchell being out uh, is a massive loss. So Wainwright's going to come in. Uh, so's the wall. The question is, do we bring in Ade or AD, who's got a 6.49 economy rate? Goldsworthy's been really good. But maybe I just give Ade... A little sprinkle just to see if he's got something a bit extra. Tom Banton at the top uh, will open the batting. If we look at how people did last year, Banton was pretty poor. Plummer was poor. Smead was poor. <laughs> Golly was poor. Maybe Golly's the guy that we should look to actually get out of this lineup. We're going to do it, and I'm going to move Abel up to four. Four-star rated team. Won 13 out of 14 games in the group stages last year. Can we do it again? Oh, we lose with one ball to spare. They knock him off. Nine down. Pernham. Don't know who you are, but 82 or 40 batted really, really well. Didn't quite have the, the same impact in the power play bowling. Our seamers for three overs each. We did get three wickets, uh, but slightly expensive. 180 was the score for us. Banton with 84. Plummer 47 or 41 was a slow effort. Uh, we just didn't get that second wind acceleration from the rest of the order. Walls improved his attacking one day bowling. That's what I love to see. Oh, we've won by four wickets in the final over. What a performance that is. Robinson on strike. Wainwright gets the wicket. Caught at slip by Smead. We only score 139. We got blown away again. Like, that's the second game in a row where this is just diminished in seconds. Finn Hudson Prentice, wonderful player. He uh, rolled through us. Alan, Kale, and Mitchell all back. That pumps us up to five stars. 21 to win off the final over. Not to be. We lose. Uh, really poor with the bat again. Blown away. Two down within the first couple of balls as well. One with seven overs to spare against Kent. Bowled them out for 100. Really good performance here. Add a four for 15. Take note, the young lad, 23-year-old spinner, is not having the worst season. Only four wickets in the championship, but that's because the seamers are bowling on a seaman wicket and getting the job done. Um... His 9.7 strike rate in this competition is much appreciated. And Green's back from the Indian Premier League. 
which is very interesting, where he's not doing too bad. He's not setting the world alight, but we could bring him in for Bartlett. 156 strike rate could be useful. Does mean we're still five stars as well. Oh, we've been annihilated. Uh, 146 at all out, chasing 190. TKC with 90. Uh, we didn't get control of the innings at all. No wicket, well, one wicket, Eskenazi went up top. Uh, and then with the bat, usual Plummer and Banton gone really early. Alan, Mitchell, Addy and Leach all in the test team. Addy's in the test team. With literally, he's got four championship wickets to his name. And he's been called up to the England squad. We're making a controversial call. I'm going with five seamers here. Hoping to win the toss and bowl here. Wainwright's back in the team. Wall's going to take the new ball. Interesting, Cale's lost his place in that England test team. Overton's back in and George Bartlett into the middle order. And we drop down to a four-star rated team. Our batting is in such a poor space. 54 all out. I wasn't even going aggressive. I just normally bat in here and we got blown away. Harmer taking four for nine on the most overcast conditions is a little bit ridiculous. Plummer's coming out and Edmonds is going in and Golly's coming into the middle order. I'm putting players in that I feel is going to give us more strike rate, which is something we desperately need. We win by five runs. Defend 176. Edmonds comes in and scores 61 off 33. A 184 strike rate. Three big sixes to his name. Uh, that's a good effort. I, I like that. Averaging 61, 184 strike rate for his career now. That's useful. Golly comes in 26 off 20. Chocolate fire guard. We get through them with three and four. World, Chess Ch World Test Championship final is underway. Allen's in the team, but he's batting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Mitchell's also in the team, so a couple of our players called up. Not playing, which is not very useful. As we go and lose by five runs against Gloucester. Really close, but we couldn't chase 1, 5, 1. Batting is massively a problem. Leach has returned. England's won the Test Championship by 418 runs. Allen with a 37 to his name. Did he get any in the first innings? 29. Mitchell with a twofer. Kale is gone. Mitchell's away. So we're going to have to make a, an actual change here. Goldsworth is going to be the guy to come in. Does give us an extra bat, which could be crucial. And I've just realised we're actually back playing first-class cricket. So Lamanby is going. He's having a poor season. Plus, he's out injured. Ben Green, Andrew and Mead could come in. I think the guy I'm going to look at, though, is Rafferty. And I'm going to ask a lot of him to open the batting. Ade's on international duty carrying drinks. Uh, so Jack Leach can come back into the team. But we are weakened. No Mitchell, no Kale, no Addy. Holy moly, we got battered. Batting lineup is all at sea in all formats. Not quite good enough. Uh, we've got problems at the top. Rafferty came in. Didn't really set the world alight. He, he did play this knock, though. And this is really interesting. First innings, nothing. Second innings, 97 off 274. Batted on one aggression. Tried to save the game by batting five sessions. Couldn't quite do it. We are top after seven. But now we're seeing the cracks. Brindle's improved his front foot, uh, his fast bowling. And that's one thing we've not seen this year. We've not actually seen many improvements from our guys. Back to the blast. And we are now a three and a half star rated team. It's getting harder. And we get a win. 1-5-9, and for the first time in a long time, middle order held. Smead, uh, openers are terrible. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Openers just are not working. Uh, but Abel and Green added some good runs at the end. Managed to go to, to a reasonable score. Ruse improved his aggressive batting, which I love to see, because he, I'd love to put him in this team. Uh, and I'm going to work on his boundary hitting. Very defensive first-class player. Average aggression. Uh, one day in T20. So, uh, can it improve boundary hitting? Might get him ready to play some blast. And we just smash Essex. I just clicked past it by accident. Um, but really good performance. 166 with the bat. Brindle, 42 off 19. I'm happy about a bit of that. But the ball was key. Overton and Wall picked up four or five wickets in the power play. Put the game beyond them. Jack Leach is now in the England test team. Kale's back. And Golly's improved the offside batting to the limit. And we're running out of things. His front foot's to the limit. His offside's to the limit. And fast bowling is also to the limit. Have a go on the leg side. I do have Kale back available. Um, but I'm... do I bring him back in? That's the question. Wall's been amazing. 21 wickets at 12 with a 6.87 economy rate. Wainwright's been good when he's come in. So the only one we can do is bring out Goldsworthy. But I can't do it. For all the accolades that he got last year... 
with his 58 wickets from 28 games across all the different T20 leagues he played in. I don't know if I can get him back into this team at the moment. Coverton's going to be the one to miss out. And we win by 32 against Glamorgan. 222 for 8. Edmonds was putting up a stinker. Going to almost run a ball before I just went full aggression. And he accelerated quite well to make 58. Good performance from Will Smead. We've not seen a lot of that in general. But 52 for him. Brindle with some runs. And then with the ball, we only got two in the opening spell. But it was good enough. The economy rates were good enough. And it puts us 6 and 5. And on the brink of trying to make the last 8. We lose by 3 wickets. But we're bowled out for 99. This, this is the inconsistencies we see with 6 and 6. But anyone can make it. you just got to go on a run. Win 2. So we flick back to a bit of county championship action. Lamanby is still not going to come back into this team. In fact, Rafferty, uh, what I'm actually going to do with his batting is I'm going to start prepping him for an opener. No, first class opener. A good win, actually. A very good win against this team. Thanks to Tom Abel, really. His 144 here was immense. Uh, it's a very good bowling attack. Porter, Anderson, Stone. Ollie Stone's made the move there. Sam Cook, who was great for us in the Sussex save. Plummer sets up with a 95. Brindle, 89 off 95 was really good. And we bowled them out for 165. Wall with eight wickets in the game. We're eight games down, 20 points clear. Goal has improved his leg side batting. And Kale's improved one day bowling to the limit. I guess the next one um, probably should be some defensive bowling. Lose by 13 to Surrey. 198, they score. James Smith batted really well. Really fast, 206 strike rate for a 62. Uh, just pff, usual, usual sort of issues. We're not going through in the blast this time. Uh, barring a miracle. Yeah, smash the last game of the season. Bowl uh, Kent out for 1 2 1. We scored 211. This was a good performance. Edmonds, 52. Uh, he's actually been reasonable for his averaging 30 with a 175 strike rate. I'd say that's actually very good. And then just usual middle order, but just scoring at a fast enough rate to give ourselves a score. We don't go through. Defending champions are out. But 7-7 seven and is probably a fair indication of where we are with our batting. Alan returns from international duty, where he's putting up some pretty reasonable numbers. Averaging 46, uh, 558 runs. Averaging over 40 in all competitions. Averaging 60 in T20 cricket. And three test match wickets to his name. What about our man Mitchell? Averaging 20 with the bat. That's useful in test. 72 wickets at 23. Honestly... It's a fine performance. And we get them all back. And Richards has been promoted as well. 24 and a half grand. Right arm medium fast. 96 wickets. This is this is looking good already. 96 wickets at 21 in second team cricket. That's useful. 29 at 19 in one. Ear. Oh, mate. He looks a stud. He looks an absolute stud muffin. It puts us in a good position, actually, this. Because we've got all our players... Back, Mitchell's back, Kale's back, Addy's back. And we smash, this was five star against five star. We smash Lancashire. 182 all out, 133 all out. Lewis Gregory with Pfeiffer. But Lewis Gregory with 87 not out as well. He is such a talented all round player for us. Uh, year in, year out, adds great value, particularly as that fourth seamer. Um, superb performance from the team. Couldn't be happier. Runs as well for Allen. He scores 146. The Plum Dog with 90. Uh, great performance. Nine down, seven, one and one, 154 on the board. Swanton's improved their front foot batting to the limit, which is a little bit of a... Uh, it's, it's a good thing, but it's also making sure that we're trying to develop the Royal London Cup players as well as our team gets butchered again. Alan, Mitch and Kale and Addy and Leach. Oh, they've all gone. The bowlers in second team cricket working out how we piece this team together. Drinkle's got 35 at 20 with a good strike rate. Uh, so's Whitehead, 46 at 21, looks very good. Leonard is not the player uh, at all. Baker, 38 at 17 with an incredible strike rate. Gold, Goldsworthy, if we want a spinner, which sometimes it is good to have a spinner, looks pretty good. Um, Aldridge is looking like he could be ready. So that's the change we're going to make. It's We keep having to do this makeshift. The players we sign are that good. But it's going to be Plummer, Rafferty, Abel, Swanton coming in is going to be the change as well. Does mean we're no longer five star. We're a four star rated team going up against a five star rated Sussex team. Oh, we've got out of jail with that. We get nine points for the draw. 
We bat 106 overs for 217. We needed about 450 to win. We thoroughly outplayed Tom Abel, 24 strike rate. Love to see that one drop catch, but fairly chanceless. Brindle as well with a 31 strike rate. Get it done. They bat big. We didn't look like getting it done. Wall got injured as well, which caused us massive problems. Bowling unit was weak. Then it got weakened further. And then with the bat, no one stood up. Okay, Aldridge comes in and improves his bowling technique. And we've got to make a change, and it's a big change. We dropped to a three and a quarter star rated. Whitehead's coming in for debut. Wall isn't quite fit for the game. What a win. We have beat them. We only score 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Jimmy Rude, this could be massive. 96 retired hurt. Gregory with 54. Rafferty with 64. Set it up. But bowling attack, everyone chipping in. Whitehead with the first wicket. Got Joe Weatherly. Scored a good 100 in 2022, I think it was. He scored a big one. Uh, one wicket again. But team just does enough to give us a victory. Somehow, we're a, we're a winning team. And by that I mean we set Seamers wickets that are result pitches and our bowling attack has generally been pretty good. As we lose a hell of a lot of players and we try and piece together what our team is going to be for the Royal London Cup. It's the same every year. And this is the team we're going to go with. Jack Leach is available. Wall and Whitehead are going to take the new ball. Wayne Wright and Aldridge are there. This is how they did last year. A hmm, little bit disappointing, but we do have options. We've got Leonard... Uh, Baker, Drinkle, Richards who could come in. With the bat not so many options. Brindle's going to move up to bat at three because I feel like he could be uh, the guy. Swanton and Flavin. Oh, what are you going to get with that? Don't know. Cook's going to play. Uh, Jimmy Ruse out injured. We've got Golly who can come in. We've got Tom Lamanby or Rafferty. All of them can come in. Uh, Rafferty, if we remember, is the guy. He's averaging 36 in what three day cricket but 52 in one day cricket and we also got Goldsworthy who could come in as well so it's going to be difficult we're not even a two star rated team or worse than we were last year as we pick up a win 269 Edmund scores a century his second century in the one day cup which is very very nice to see uh, very poor throughout but Wayne Wright popped up with a 50 as well and then with the ball it was just controlled. There was no one blowing anyone away or blowing anyone off. It was just controlled, good economy rates. Oh, man, we're terrible with the bat. We were cruising at 122 for two at one stage and not even trying to be aggressive. We just get blown away. Don't feel like Flavin uh, is the guy at all. I wonder whether a Tom Lamanby in the middle order might be a good thing just to firm it up a little bit. Plummer's done it. We get a win. Plummer gets a winning 100, 109 off 127. That's a hell of a knock at 85 strike rate. Plummaging the ball through the offside. One boundary on the leg side. So maybe we need to do a bit of work on that. But it is a first one day century for him as well. A good performance with the ball. Actually, I think it might be the second time with Boulder team out. Bracey with 118. But Wall was immense. Five for 18 off eight. It's another win. And it's another bowler. Derbyshire bowled out in 38 overs. Wall keeps picking up a couple at the start. Um, but it's the wickets in the middle that's proving key. No one could really get going for Derbyshire. And we knocked them off. Edmonds is having a good campaign so far. 103 of 63 and an 80 not out. With 3 and 1, we could make it through. But don't jinx it. Don't say that just yet. 18 runs short. They get 298. Slightly expensive here. Wainwright, 3 for 73, was was the one that they really got hold of. Uh, Jack Bird batted really well for his 94 at a runner ball. Without that, they were struggling, and it was our usual thing where we had a little bit of a collapse. Don't think we've quite got it right with... Oh, James Rue's fit. This could be a game changer. Jimmy Rue is fit. He can come in for Cook, who is averaging 14. That could be a really, really meaningful change to us. Uh, with the ball, Wainwright slightly expensive at 6.3s. Uh, Lamanby is coming in averaging 27, so that's not too bad. Overall, relatively happy. Not going to make any changes to the top. Uh, we're just going to keep trying to do what we're doing and win a few more games. Oh, it's a terrible performance. 318. We bat really well. James Rue adds good value. Oh, 50s from the openers, and they knock them off really easy. We had no control, no wicket taking. And now it's starting to get murky. Going to make a change. Lamanby's out. I'm bringing in Rafferty. 
we stay two stars. But he averages 50 odd in second team cricket in this competition, so you never know. And we win just. I know 38 runs looks convincing, but it wasn't always because everyone kept getting a few and getting them closer and closer. But Wainwright's 4 for 28, 2.8 and over was critical, as was Jimmy Roo's 82 off 85. It puts us into the dance, but North Ants have got games in hand. As Edmonds is out for six days, Richards is out for five weeks. Oh, of all the timing you could have got, that is not what we needed. Tom Lemonby is going to come in and open the batting. We're playing against Glamorgan, just checking the table. We're in at the moment. And if we beat Glamorgan, we are definitely in. I think 20, sorry, 20 wickets. 20 wickets is going to be key. 20 wickets would be exceptional. Um... I think taking wickets is going to be key. Whitehead's been really good, but doesn't take any wickets. Question is, is there someone else that we want to make a last desperate change for? Drinkle would be the one. But I'm not going to do it. I haven't got the balls to do it on such a big occasion. A chance. This is a really big chance. As we lose to Glamorgan, 2-5-9. This... This is the frustrating part of our batting lineup. This should have been so much bigger. Brindle and Jimmy Rue batted super, put on 107. And then there's nothing. And we're so bowling heavy, our tail gets blown away by a hat trick. And they knock them off quite cruisingly. And we are not through. Oh, that's a hard one to take. Four and four. I thought we were good enough to get through. As we flick back to the championship... Where we're currently in second with a game in hand over Sussex. Three games to go. Can we knock off the championship? We've got some players back. Kale's back. Wall's back. Jimmy Roo's obviously back. And Jack Leach is back. But we've got a whole bunch of guys on international duty as well. We cruise home with seven wickets to spare against Hampshire. Good performance with the ball. Kale with three for Wainwright with four for the bat. Tom Abel. We're indebted to this guy this year. He's... Uh... Of all the times I've tried to drop him, he's gone over a 1,000 runs in Division 1, an average of almost 63 centuries. Three centuries last year, and I've dropped him for four games. So, uh, fine performance. Gregory and Leach were key as well. They put on 130 for that seventh wicket partnership. But Jack Leach coming in at number eight shows you how fragile our batting lineup can be. Swanton improves offside batting to the limit. And I just want to stop the press for a second, and I want to look at some test match players that we've got going on. Jack Leach, 42 games for England, 176 wickets. Mitchell, 76 wickets at 25. Allen, 690 runs at 49. Coverton, Adis played now three games, 27 wickets at 19. And Kale, 16 at 26. That's exceptional. One day cricket, we've got a few more. Green's played, Gregory's played, Adis played. Uh, six at 56, that's not quite working out. Kale, 14 at 35, not amazing. But Mitchell might be one of the best players to appear on the game at altogether. Uh, and he's played 19 T20 games as well, 35 at 17. So we are flourishing in supporting the England train. Big game. Surrey away on a bowling condition sort of deck. It might not be a result pitch. Oh, it could be a result pitch, but there is rain planned. I actually don't know what to do there. We're going to have a bat. Big result. Swanton goes to his second uh, first-class century. Uh, when did he score one? Two seasons ago in Division 1. Only played four games last year. But he's gone to a century here. Banning beautifully. 100 off 207 in a big partnership with Tom Abel. Cruise home by 8. 4-7-4 four, the score. Abel and Swanton. Brilliant. Tom Abel is in fine fettle. Uh, and is <laughs> 1,221 runs on average, 67. That's how good he's been. Uh, so we, we, we bat really well, but the key was the ball. We got the best of the bowling conditions when it was raining and overcast, and we made the most of it. Uh, Kale 2, Wall 3, Wainwright 3, and same in the second innings, except Wall shone with his 6 for 69, which puts us 15 points clear from Sussex with one game remaining. We go unchanged against Northampton. A chance to do it. A chance to say that we've won the Blast. We've won Division 2. And we've won the County Championship Division 1. We're just the Royal London Cup to go. It's overcast. Day 1 
We want to win a game of cricket, so we're going to bowl. With two runs to win, it is pumped away by Swanton, a signing from the first season, and we have gone on and won the county championship. Rafferty 90, Abel 84 not out. Of course, Abel 84 not out. He has had a magnificent season. We get the victory. Sussex lose anyway, so we do it in style. Gregory with a five. Wall with a five. We're top of the pops, the cream of the crop. Winners of the county championship division one. And we do it with the best bat in the country being young, young, 30-odd year old. Tom Abel with 1,331 runs. That is quite a phenomenal effort. And with the ball, Wall made the top list with 63 wickets as well. It's just a, a fine, fine effort. Abel's 1,331 runs was exceptional. Plummer, 894 at 38. I'll take that from my opener. James Rue had an improved year, averaging 43, scoring 747. Allen was great, averaged over 100 when he was playing, but trying to get him is going to be really difficult going forward considering he's one of the best in England. Brindle, averaged 38. I'll take a bit of that. Rafferty, there's a bit of work to do there. Swanton, averaged 43. All very good stuff, but the ball was key. Wall 63 at 23, Gregory 53 at 27, the best fourth fourth bowler, uh, fourth seamer going around. Kale 51 at 24, is economy rate all fairly expensive, but get it done. Wayne Wright 32 wickets in eight games, at an average of 27. Mitchell 28 at 20. There's just a lot to like about this team and what we've been able to do. Uh, even in the one-day competitions, Wall and Wainwright were fantastic. Leech expensive. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. We are now three trophies down out of the floor. We'll see you again next time.